Furies. Team Liquid and Evil Geniuses, game number one was a beatdown. Game number two was EG. All right, they're sitting up straight in the chair now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, had some really good adjustments. You know, getting Vulcan on engage, I think, was the priority thing. I'm going to be really interested to see what TL does as far as their pivots, because back-to-back -back games, it was Nautilus, LeBlanc, and Zeri as the first-round bans. Do they shift that up now that they have actually dropped the game? Yeah. Or are they comfortable being back on red side here, having fifth pick to be able to kind of answer whatever EG is crafting? And I really love the draft mind games that occur in a best of five. It's such a huge part of the series. We mentioned the adaptation. Evil geniuses rose to the occasion. They adapted, they answered, they struck back in game number two. Yep. Now Team Liquid, what changes did they need to make? How much of it was composition? How much of it was execution? How much of it was just, hey, maybe it didn't work into what EG specifically had, right? Like, lots of questions. Team Liquid are the ones who are now challenged with answering them. Absolutely. And I always find it so interesting to, to really get kind of insight into what the teams read on the problems were, right? Because we're watching the game, seeing everything, and it's a very different experience than when you're actually playing oh, yeah. the game. Um, sometimes even just like the implied threat of a champion can, can really change the way how you were playing when they're playing in fog constantly. So particularly jungle matchup, something that we've talked a lot about, you know, is Lee Sin going to maintain being that high prio for EG? You know, RTL going to be worried about that and banning it away? Are they going to shift that up? Because clearly TL has been prioritizing the Diego. EG is on the Lee Sin side of the matchup. That's what they want. And okay. he keep banning TF, so they are, are going to switch things up a little bit here. Well, this is what they did, remember, on in game side. number yeah. one. Yeah, back when they were on blue side, these are the same champions that they were banning, the Volley Bear, the TF. EG has banned Volley Bear both games so far. They really do not want Santorin playing that. And TL on both sides, so far, everything has stayed the same. You know, will they ban off the Nautilus and keep it 3-4-3? You know, that is kind of the highest prio support pick right now, is the Nautilus point-and-click ultimate. Uh, makes things very, very easy for the engage. Uh, banning out the Karma. Uh, likely worried about Karma Ezreal uh, as that bot lane duo. That, I do think, is a pivot from game number one because I remember talking about the potential of that pick um, getting locked in. Ooh, and instead it will okay. be Lee Sin. So there it is. So TL wanted to muffle Lee Sin. He was such a problem for them in game number two. I thought Inspired absolutely ran that game. Uh, it does mean, though, if, if you go Jinx here first, you know, that's, that's normal. Yeah. Um, but Viego can get taken away, and then you're kind of knocked down the tier list. So I'm curious to see, does Inspired actually grab Viego first pick here now? Just to kind of try to deny that from Santorin. Nope. The answer is no. Jinx is the priority pick. And now I am kind of expecting Santorin again to go back to the Viego, unless they're really rethinking their priorities, because they were clearly very high on this. They were willing to first pick it last game. But Nautilus is up. Nautilus making it through the first oh, ban phase okay. for the first time this series, and then an immediate lock on the Ari again as well for yeah. Pearson. Yeah, so Nautilus being left up, it is a little bit surprising that Vulcan didn't go, want to go towards it, but Leona is a good answer to that matchup, and maybe he's more comfortable on that side. A lot of people do like uh, the Leona into this matchup specifically. I do think it's easier to execute on Nautilus you know, in team fights, uh, but if Nautilus is, is going in, you can actually go for it on the Nautilus if it's kind of support on support, and the ADs are both hitting him. Uh, Leona with the W up becomes incredibly tanky yeah. and often wins out in those kind of exchanges. So it's one of those things that the counter engage from the Leona side can be quite powerful. Bjergsen, again, though, on the Ari, was so successful on this in-game number one. I think just has been one of his best picks. Uh, most of his most dominant games this year have come from the Ari, and it's something that's a lot more difficult to really punish and, and focus on. We saw the early pressure last time around, utilizing the rise and the lease in to force out Victor's flash. Yeah. Not going to be able to do that quite as simply against the Ari. Uh, and not even going to first round their jungle. So, you know, does Viego fall through picks and bans here entirely after being first picked last game? Would be interesting. Team Liquid does still have one more pick they can make. They can try to answer AD carry here. Otherwise, EG would have the opportunity to put a couple more bands towards that if they Ooh. like. No, they want to go for the jungle. Okay. And they're not going for Viego. They want to go for some powerful early game ganking and some solid team fight set up with the Jarvan. And I like that when you have Nautilus. I mean, you have one of the best roaming supports in the game. You pair it up with an incredibly powerful early game jungler. You know, TL, going to be a little bit of pressure on them to make things happen early here. Will EG ban out some of the hyperscaling carries you know, from that bot side, or will it just be more continued focus towards Whippo? Uh, they banned out, I believe, Graves GP in their second round of bans on their first blue side game, you know, trying to limit the AD options from top side. This time it's going to be swapped up to the Orin, as that was the fifth pick yep. um, from him last time around. Uh, I think GP would also make sense if we're, if we're thinking about playing you know, from the other side of the map, enabling and engage. 
Orin is also an interesting ban just because I don't feel like TL needs more engage with their composition right now. Right. So it wouldn't necessarily be as as critical. Whereas last time around, they didn't have any hard engage. Um, so they were kind of more dependent upon that fifth pick. But TL targeting Inspire, Diana taken away, Viego taken away. Oh, yeah. uh, so knocking him down the tier list quite heavily as far as those junglers go. Zin is still available though, and it is his most played. So he might just default towards going for that. One ban left. Evil Geniuses, where do they want to focus? This is another one up like there TP, towards Wimbo. Nope, I'm misfortune. Wow. Okay. okay. So th they're a little bit concerned that TL may go the Danny route and actually grab that for themselves. It would be really strong setup, obviously, you know, for the MF uh, to bring in the Nautilus. Hans has been playing quite a lot of Ash. Uh, three picks of it, you know, all down in the last two weeks, I believe. Uh, he played it three times, won every game on it. It is heavy, heavy on the engage. I will say yeah. they're, they're a little bit light on, on damage. Like this isn't a truly late game comp. They don't have bad team fighting by any means because they have three forms of really, really strong engage. I just think that they might want a little bit of consistent damage out of Whippo. Um, we'll see if they are going to go for that. This okay. would be an interesting pick. I mean, yeah. Ash, Ash does struggle into divers. And if you have another dive buddy, like if you go Nocturne plus another dive champion from top, like an Akali or something, um, and go towards that back line, they are going to okay. lock it in. So they are going to look to dive. You can either deliver your top laner in with Realm Warp, or you can draft another dive buddy. But you want someone who can kind of get into that back line and punish the Ash, who is very low mobility. There's no TK to protect you this time around. Uh, TL are going to be looking to go in. And it's, it's, it is okay. that dive buddy they're going for. So they are going to go Kennen. This is blind, mind you. So there is some concerns about what Bobo could go towards. Uh, Aurelia is a matchup that a lot of people like, but you know, Bobo's not really much of an Aurelia guy. Graves, I, I think, does work as an answer. I think that, you know, especially past the early levels, if you're going towards Shilbo, some of those tankier builds, it's very okay. difficult for Kennen to actually push out the Graves whatsoever. So you're expecting Bobo to have Pryo in that side lane for sure and to be more of a side lane force. Uh, this one's more of like a 1-4 for me, G, rather than playing fully through sides because Kennen kind of has to just like push and then group. Uh, but it's a lot of dive, so really, really interesting. Both teams, I think, very heavily focused towards team fight. Graves and Rise can look to split, but it's going to be about engage and it's going to be about who has that better setup because if your, your opponents hit that go button first and actually lock someone down, there's so much CC on both teams that someone's going to die 100 zero. And that presence of the CC and the engage on both teams leads me to believe this one's going to be a bloodbath because yeah. both teams can look at a situation, look at a split pusher, look at anything and say, hey, we're going now and then the other side's got to do something about it. But the problem is, man, it's like you were already talking about. If you're getting dove on by two or three different champions, there's not always something you can do about it. No, there absolutely isn't. It's going to be a really, really exciting one. I think having a successful Nocturne game is absolutely critical here for EG. Inspired, you know, when you're good on the Nocturne, when you're ahead, every time your ultimate's up, you look for an ultimate. It feels so easy to play the game, but when you fall behind, it starts to feel useless. We'll see if they can pull it off. Welcome back, everybody. Let's rock and roll. Game number three. Both teams have showed they got what it takes. Both teams have showed us they know how to get the win. And the both fans got what it takes for sure. And both teams are showing plenty of go buttons here in game three. We're off to the races grouped up at level one. Oh, four man invade. Are, oh, they are spotted. They are spotted. So Sin okay. Okay. sees them walking up. They were looking for a wraparound there on Bjergsen. We'll see if they want to play for any sort of vision. This does give TL priority to actually invade on bot side and drop a ward, but they had an early defensive ward that spots them, and now EG can actually look for a five-man answer. I think that may be what they go for here. Walk in with five towards bot. You know there's only three from TL. TL could potentially be in trouble if they try to walk out. They're expecting Bjergsen won't base, and he will walk through towards mid. And if he does that, it's going to be flash or death, almost guaranteed. And I think they have a good read because Bjergsen still has not based. He's going to path into this. EG have this downloaded. All right, EG, will they stay? Will they hold this position long enough? They're Impact gonna, is already at left. At this point, they're going to for sure. Impact is already left. He's back up in top lane. Core JJ, they come. Hans, Bjerg. Okay, Core and Hans are leaving. Be Here Bjerg. comes Bjergsen. Okay. Oh, no. Where are you going to go? Oh, no, Ari. Don't walk into oh that. Oh, my God. Ari, no. First blood over to Evil Genius. And it's Nocturne. It's Nocturne that gets it. I said he had to have a good start. He wasn't expecting that. 
Oh my god, they just had such a smart early plan there. So they invade topside, and when you invade topside, Teal is not expecting you to have a defensive ward there on that bot side. So around Raptors, Teal thought they were off vision, but because EG had the spot and Bjergsen doesn't base, you know he has to walk back through there to get towards mid. That is massive. Okay, Vulcan gets dredge line down here in bottom as these guys are trading back and forth, but an awesome start for Inspired. EG loving having that Nocturne off to such a good start. Holy moly, man. Awesome level one. Great stuff yeah. from Evil Geniuses here. Team Liquid, you, we already talked about how they're a little bit light on the damage overall in this composition compared to an enemy comp that's gonna have that cannon, gonna have that Jinx and the Rise. So you can't afford to fall super behind early. Yeah, definitely not. I do think, to be fair, the Graves helped to shore up some of those concerns. You know, they went for a high DPS champion out of top lane. So they have that double marksman. You know, Ash is not a Jinx, but when you add in the Graves in, on top, you know, instead of something like an Orin, it starts to really, you know, keep that damage here pretty high. They are going to be able to play through sides with it, though I do think, especially when you're looking towards, you know, like three items, uh, two items, Rise should have Pryo in that side lane. Uh, Rise is very difficult to deal with, but Santorin getting aggressive. And the bane of all junglers, the Hawk Shot, yep. will be sent out towards top, but they have eyes on him. Uh, as there was a ward there over by the blue. So Santorin knows he's fully safe to do this. And he could even go for Krugs here potentially as well. Yeah. Try to steal a double camp or maybe even set up for something more aggressive. But I just don't think that they're going to look for a dive. The EG's too healthy. And the thing to remember about Hawkshot, it's what you were talking about earlier in terms of jungling in general. You don't have to hit the guy with the Hawkshot and actually see his position on the map. Checking see where the he's camps. not. Yeah. See what's up. See what's been cleared. Infer the rest of the information yourself. Vulcan's gonna step into the brush there and find the two little baby Kruggies just He's waiting rich. on him, which means Santorin has already been here and left. He'll go right back up into the river. He'll pick up that scuttle crab for himself. Nice early pathing here from Team Liquid's jungler. Of yeah. course, it's still not gonna get him as many advantages as just having a free first blood like his opponent, but it's something. No, but I mean, you, you, you make the most of what you got, right? Uh, and he does take away those two camps. He has more to farm. Uh, EG is going to play for this topside scuttle, so we're expecting to see Inspired heading up there, but Inspired will be down on XP, which is very important for Nocturne, right? Nocturne wants to farm to a quick six. You're not necessarily looking to really interact with the J4 before that. Right. Uh, you can sometimes punish people if they're really overextended, but the cases where you get pre-six ganks from Nocturne are usually uh, pretty few and far between. Right. Instead, you're just going to try to go get the respawn here of the Raptors. If you can take this and then get over towards scuttle, it's going to be pretty nice, but... Uh, we see Santorin is coming for the response. And if he smites this, then maybe Santorin potentially challenges him at Scuttle uh, right. if they can't get the push. So we'll see. JoJo's just trying to shove this. And notice where JoJo's playing. He's actually kind of playing that corridor to the side so that if his if his opponent you know, comes in, he just has first move, right? You play above Bjergsen uh, so that you know you will win out in that 2v2 if it breaks out. And I just think that's smart positioning from JoJo. Okay, well, Inspired's well, coming around. They might just dive Bjergsen here. JoJo tanks the turret as long as he can. One more hit's what they need. It'll be one for one, but Bjerg will lose the wave as well. He loses the wave. He will get a shutdown, though, because that's his second kill. So it should be a shutdown over to Bjergsen. So a good injection of gold, but he loses the experience. He loses the wave, and... Won't be anything more, as Jojo obviously gonna have to back up here, knowing that J4 is in the area. He had double wards to actually spot him coming down. Nice aggressive move, though, from EG. Knowing TP is down, that second gank is always the one that really does hurt the most. You know, Jojo has not even spent his TP. So we can watch this one more time. You know, again, playing towards this top side, it's all about this. They have wards up here. They have a ward over here. They're trying to spot that. And they even spot him with the Scryer's Bloom. So when he spots him on the Scryer's Bloom, Jojo has the push. And you can tell he's calling for this. They know Jarvan is here. So he's going to look for the wraparound play. Jojo comes in, lands the Rune Prison here, standing with minions in between him. So there's no chance of a charm landing. The fear comes through flash on the end of the tether to try to create space but the flash follow is there and they get the kill but now it's realm warp to bot here we go core jj and han sama trying to get out it's flash from both team liquid bottom laners it's the cleanse from hans as well wow that's gonna cost him if eg can bring people back here later or maybe just bring them back now jojo Pune gets the third kill of the game for evil genius han's not paying respect to the fact He's still in the area. Yeah. You just blew all your sums. He walks over. Oh boy, but now Vulcan's not paying respect to the fact that both teams have a jungler. <laughs> both teams do have a jungler, but EG had a mid laner too. So they're able to come out on top with that. Whippo taking top scuttle. 
you know, has had some pretty good prio in this matchup. You can see that Buff was kind of building for that 1v1, grabbed an early yeah. null to be able to reduce any chance of an all-in because that's really all Kennen can do in this matchup is, is kind of look for that 100 to zero play. Blow him up. Once you get towards shield bow, you're not poking this guy out. It's just not realistic unless the Graves really misplays. But impact on the push. Uh, will be able to try to harass on these minions, deny as much as he can. EG with a great start here, though. A little unfortunate that Jinx, I think, didn't get the kill on the bot side, but going to JoJo is, is not bad by any means, and they're threatening the invade. You can see the question mark ping is coming out, you know, on the cannon. They're not sure if he's going to move or not, so Inspired is pretty safe to actually make Ooh. this invade happen. Nice Vulcan done. Vulcan roams up. JoJo is here on the push, and EG are getting a lot done. And now, you gotta be sweating his TL. Like, is, is he behind you? Is he going for a wraparound? They're gonna just take the red. Santorin's gonna have to give this up and try to go cross map. We'll see if he wants to try to go immediately for enemy red. Um, but Inspired could potentially actually cross back and defend this because Ryze will be there. Yup. And you mentioned earlier, yeah, it doesn't feel great as the Nocturne to be behind any XP. Yes, he's level five compared to the level six of Santorin. But, he's but got when he's squad. got his whole team, it doesn't matter. Core JJ and Santorin now in the enemy jungle. They'll clear out the ward placed down over the wall by Danny. And Santorin will at least be able to trade red for red yep. here. But this game is a story of EG moving first in the first eight minutes. Absolutely. And they're, they're moving first with, I think, more powerful scaling, to be honest with you. You know, they, they have the Nocturne and wants to play more forward six. A rise in Jinx is incredibly strong late game. Uh, Vulcan, you know, no wards there to speak of, so not going to see the J4 moving out, but it's going to look for the Hex Flash play, see if he's perhaps still got something going on and does at least clear out the Blast Cone. And clearing out that Blast Cone, even though, yes, Darwin can go over the wall, then he has to spend the Flag Dragon to go over the wall. It gives you time to react to any potential dive that were coming in. Um, so still worthwhile to do that. Um, but, but again, you know, paying a lot of respect here. It's double AP soul laners, and it's a tremendous amount of CC. Oh, yeah. So mercs are going to be incredibly high value in this game. So 100%. Rushes the early mercs, goes towards the vamp, and uh, he's just playing here to, to chill and farm. And we'll see if EG can try to look to punish the bot side. But I think that's the best spot for them to go right now. You know, uh, Inspired now has six. There's no flash on, on Hansama. They're going in. They look Good for hook. Hans, but yeah, the hook stops so Vulcan big. from locking him down. That would have been very, very scary for Hans otherwise. I think it's death if, if, because he doesn't have cleanse. If that hook if that hook does not come in and interrupt the stun, then the chompers are layered over top. I think you just get trained down because Danny could even flash to follow and you had the ignite available. That hook buys him time for cleanse to come back up. TL, though, moving up towards the top side. Impact does spot that they're around Herald. They have the Nocturne ulti, and they have the Cannon ult. I think they can fight this, but TL has first move there, even yep. moving up their AD, so that is going to discourage EG from going for anything more. And now we just have to see how many plates does Danny get, because that is the cost you're paying on bot side right now, is Jinx pushing up towards this tower. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to even get one plate, so just nice map movement here from TL. And the thing that I'm going to be looking at, because you talk about impact being ready to be there, right? Top laners typically don't get to participate much in the overall flow of the game until those teleports <laughs> become unlocked. Oh, right? they're going to go. But that's going to be a big thing now. I was oh. just about to say the cannon ultis can change the game, and they set it up for the kill on Bwipo in top. You tell no lies. They're realm warping in, though. Core overextended. He's, he's no flash. He's going to probably go down. Yup, that Nautilus ain't long for this world. Super Mega Death Rocket comes out, but now EG's trying to be careful. They're backing away. They see that Santorin's coming down to the bottom lane, too. Core JJ stays alive. Evil Geniuses playing on the side of caution here. Yeah, they have that one ward over in River. It's this ward right here that actually made them retreat because Bjergsen went missing from mid and they saw J4 walk over the ward. So they didn't want to overcommit to the play and get punished. TL do push them back. Will claim a dragon and Bjergsen got a plate mid. So very nicely done. Jojo will lose that farm. Inspired will be able to pick it up, which is nice. And he has a fair early stride breaker. So Nocturne is going to be super strong. Three that early kills. So Stridebreaker is so strong on him. Um, you know, the active, to me, the best part about it is that basically forces Flash or the Fear will always tether, right? Because you have the speed up from your Q connecting, you can come in there with the ulti, you hit them with the Stridebreaker slow, and you're going to get that Fear tether through on a carry. Makes it very difficult to respond to. So here it is one more time, moving down towards that bot side. Uh, EG's trying to bait. As soon as Core hooks in, Jojo pops the ulti. He was standing in range of that. But then they see Santorin on that ward I pointed out. They yep. see Bjergsen go missing from mid, and they're saying no. Because yes, you're going to kill Core. If you commit to that, you will kill Core for sure. But Bjergsen will arrive, Santorin will arrive, and you'll likely lose much more than it's worth to get the kill. Right. They do not want to make that mistake. 
It's a four to two game. Yes, it is an Evil Genius's lead, but it's still very, very close. A single play can sway this game pretty far. Yeah. Rift Herald. Just like this. Summoned up here in mid with a four man push. Yerkson wants to go ahead and grab this plate first if he can there. Gonna grab it and then two more thanks to the Herald. So mid lane tier one on the side of Evil Geniuses nearly collapsed. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much back to dead even as far as the gold goes. But again, I feel more pressure you know, on the side of TL here, potentially, uh, to be able to make things happen. But yep. uh, they do have so much playmaking, so uh, neither side, I think, is, is anywhere close to like a game one uh, where you, you felt like it was a guaranteed advantage, but they're going in. All righty, here's your dive. A lot of damage coming through, and Han Sama's already gone. Now they're going to swap the turret aggro over to Inspired, but there's not enough HP to stick around and grab the kill into Core JJ just yet. Santorin making an appearance means Danny can't try to finish off that next kill. So Evil Geniuses walks out just getting the one. I mean, this is just turning into like the perfect Nocturne game. These are the games that, as a Nocturne player, you love, where all you have to do is farm. As soon as the ulti's up, ult in, get a kill. All right, back, back to farm. Back to farm and, and see you guys just, in 90 seconds. Exactly. You just keep doing it. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. They've been able to pull it off. Now grabbing the CDR boots on top have been making it look really good. And you saw in that situation there, you know, Hans has to spend the cleanse flash from Vulcan CC, but Inspired arrives, has him slowed up with his Shrivebreaker, gets the Fear Tether. So there's not really a lot of damage getting returned out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, I, I hear you, EG fans. The, the, the fans have received orders from headquarters, yeah. and now they know what the to orders do. Have come in. They the know the we plan. To <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Evil geniuses. 500 gold lead, 5 to 2 in the kills. Bjergsen waiting over the wall here in the brush. He'll find some damage onto Vulcan, but it's nothing impressive. Vulcan now threatening a re-engage. It's Core JJ is there to help out his mid laner. Here's now Santorin, Vulcan's though, in danger. He's trying to get away from this one. Santorin swoops in, but they're ready to fight back. A long range arrow and a shutdown onto Inspired. Team Liquid's found one, and it ain't gonna just be that. Two for nothing there in the trade. Hot Sama's at nothing, but he's still doing better than Danny. Three nothing in that fight for uh, TL. What a huge swing there from TL, getting all of those kills. Hods with the ulti, making such a difference in that fight. Inspired, I don't think he quite had the ulti available, and Danny arrives, but doesn't have the flash to close the gap on Han, so he can't even get the one kill, and the flanking jinx is not the most threatening. <laughs> TL skyrocket up to a 2k lead, they were behind. That is a rough swing. Oh, impact going for the slicing maelstrom on Whippo here, but Whippo just says, all right, nope. Ducks out of it with his own ulti here. Impact and Whippo dead even in terms of the state of top lane with the farm. Awesome comeback from TL on this Rocket flip the switch replay. Let's see how they did it. Yeah, we can watch it one more time. There was a ward over the wall there, you know, from TL. So he actually spots Vulcan moving over. He's looking for a little bit of poke, but decides he's going to go straight on in because they have Inspired coming over. But the problem here is really, I think, the Ash. Ash was kind of the X factor in this situation. Uh, as the Cataclysm comes in, they get grouped up and look at this arrow right in onto Inspired, very long range. Hans also slowing Danny, who's trying to come up here, hitting him with the volley as he comes across. Multiple members go down. Danny just hard commits to this. Gale Force in, almost has him. That's gotta be what, like 20 HP? It's 30 so HP, barely doesn't get him, but gets CC'd up, even blows the cleanse, goes down as a result. TL now into a good spot in this game. A lot of kills going Bjergsen's way, a lot of kills going Santorin's way. And they're gonna be able to battle back in that mid jungle. A massive, massive swing here. Worth noting that since Team Liquid also got that first Drake, now with this next one spawning here in about 10 seconds, they can put themselves in a really good spot yeah. if they go up 2-0 in terms of those neutral objectives. Team Liquid were also the ones securing the first Herald, so they're owning the neutral game here. Absolutely, and when we saw Impact actually commit the ulti on top side, like you want to trade aggressively, so we're gonna watch this play. Jojo, all right, Corin Bjergsen going in for him. I don't really see a whole lot of ways out of this one. The dragon's gonna be claimed. Jojo's gonna go down. Team Liquid is just in their momentum now. Yeah, they're looking really good in these last couple minutes, but Whippo even on the top side, because he was trading so heavily, Impact uses the ulti there, but it meant that Impact wouldn't have the ulti up before this fight. You know, on spawn, it still had about 15 seconds of cooldown, and he didn't have TP. So they were never going to look to actually challenge at that dragon without the cannon ulti. It's not going to happen. Yeah. They will be able to get tower back on the top side, so they're going to close that gold gap a little bit there, climbing back into it. Um, but Bippo trying to trade on this bottom side. We'll see where Inspired's going to go with the next ulti. 
Um, but we've got to be a little bit respectful here down on this bottom side. Because yeah. he will take a couple tower shots. And if it's fire gets in range, you can ult and solo kill that guy for sure if you know the jungler's not behind him. Super mega death rocket. Nope. Just sails off into the wild blue yonder. Nice attempt there. But the thing is, I feel like for EG this game, Azale, the X factor is impact. When you think back to all the different yeah. canon games that you've seen in pro play, the biggest moments are always the ones where the guy finds the right flank, the right angle, the right spot to be. And that is Impact's job here in this game. Absolutely. And, and that's why actually playing, you know, with with the tempo, playing with the advantage is so important because you need to be able to get flanking wards. As they're going to look to potentially dive here on top side. He is wrapped around on an EG is very far away from responding. Oh no, the three man dive. That ain't a JoJo reference. Bjergsen goes on a rampage and now Impact is just up here to watch his turret die. Team Liquid finds their seventh kill of the game. They take the tier one, bring that gold lead back up to 3K. Yeah, JoJo almost able to outplay a little bit there. Uh, so he didn't get the Everfrost root onto Bjergs, and it looked like potentially that last tower shot could have gone off. Didn't have the timing, though. And unfortunately for them, it is the tower down. It is their mid laner down again. JoJo getting picked on here in the side lanes. Dies in bot lane, goes top. And so that wave gets dove there, getting punished very heavily. TL getting aggressive in these last couple minutes, really making use of the Nautilus NJ4. They know that they have so much powerful engage. And really, in Fired, we haven't been able to see an effective ulti uh, ever since that bot lane dot. You know, that yeah. was kind of the last one. It's been a good five minutes at least. You know, didn't have the ulti up for that skirmish that they lost around mid and hasn't found an angle to do it since. And I mean, you said earlier, it was looking like one of those perfect Nocturne games where you just press yeah. R, you're a ballistic missile, you torpedo somebody, flash them a sassy emote, and then go back to farming for the next 90 seconds. Nocturne from behind, you're the one who becomes the exploding torpedo and nothing else blows up with you. <laughs> it's a you just, pinata. You just jump in and you pinata yourself. They pick up your loot mm -hmm. and walk away and have a good time. It becomes much more difficult. Yeah. Does have the level two ulti now at level 11. Very important to remember that those range increases mean a lot for Nocturne's ult. Maybe he'll be able to find some more plays with that one. Down here in bottom, Bjergsen playing with confidence here on this Ari 4 2 and 2. He's been a part of every kill except for one. Both of the items he's completed both have fight changing actives. He's in a great spot to carry this game. Yeah, he really is. And we've got to see Inspire just continue to play aggressive, continue to find these angles because it just gets harder later and later into the game as Nocturne to actually go for that. Um, because you, you just don't have as much income as solo laners. Yeah. Uh, cannon minions spawning every wave. The cannons also going up in gold at that point. You really start to get heavily outpaced. You have to play chickens more provision. Chickens are still just chickens. Exactly. Your, your carries are starting to take away your farm. Um, so you know, you've got to be able to try to play aggressive, to try to find these ultis. Uh, because TL is, is just grouping for dragons, and they're trying to play towards soul. And Nocturne ulti in 5v5 is so much weaker than Nocturne ulti in, in multi-man plays where you're like a 2v1 or a 3v2 where you can fly in kind of unexpectedly. If TLR grouped as 5 around Dragon, it's tough. I mean, you ult into the back line, very likely you get CC'd and instantly die. Plus, they have an exhaust to answer the cannon, which makes cannon so much less effective. You know, that summoner is just incredibly strong against what Impact is playing. And I love the fact that they brought it against it, right? Like, yep. you can't always stop. If Kennen has a teleport and a flash, like, he's going to get into the back line, and Exhaust is just great for making sure that it feels bad even when he succeeds. Yep. So 45 seconds on that Drake. Two Drakes already for Team Liquid to the none on the side of Evil Geniuses. Still that 3,000 gold lead persists. Evil Geniuses walking through the bottom side of the TL jungle, laying down a lot of vision. You can see two normal wards, a control ward in there. They they want to keep an eye on TL as they approach towards this Drake. They do not want to give Liquid the sole point status for the rest of the game here. Santorin just walking back to the rest of his team here. Doesn't want to stay alone for too long. But TL have mid prio, so now you're going to have to lose the river or potentially lose your, your two, right? So they're going to have to be sacking something. Uh, they may just have Kennen try to answer that and then try to come in on the flank. If EG yep. stay four here, though, TL could just try to look to engage. Santorin jumped in, but he's finding a lot of damage greeting him here. Danny grabbing every auto attack that he can and inspired jumps into the middle of everybody but the super mega death rocket goes wide Santorin oh. barely survives but with their jungler at 100 HP team liquid have lost the Drake it's a great fight there for EG is Santorin just getting a little bit too aggressive a little bit ahead of the team TL though moving up towards that top side you know, won't be able to start up the Baron just yet if that if that Jinx ult hits. I think they can get multiple kills there, though. That could mean so much more. It looked like a little sidestep on it from Santorin, yeah. you know, dodging out. Because if you get the reset, Hans was also low. 
EG though, they get the dragon. They will get that bottom tier one, closing that lead ever so slightly. Impact up here on that top side. Hanging out in the brush, sees that he's standing on top of one of those scryer trinkets, so not gonna get any sort of element of surprise on Bwipo here. Both of our top laners, you can see Bwipo actually already at his second item with the collector purchased. Mm -hmm. Impact still working towards that void staff here for his, making sure that when he goes in, he knows it's all about the entrance. Everything's about the damage. You've got to make sure that when you go in, everybody melts inside your ulti. Whippo's going to get caught out here. He's blind. inside the evil genius's jungle, and he's all alone in a 1v4. There's no Baron. way out. Eventually. We'll see if they want to actually start it up. I think they should. Bjergsen's showing bot. You start Baron and you force out at least the TP. Impact didn't commit his ulti critically. That's why they can start this. Yep. Because if TL hard commits to this and you get TP flanked, there's not a great ward, unfortunately, for them. Um, but if they had one, TL doesn't really know. You could get TP flanked here. So all they can really do is TP towards the top side where Vulcan is. He's trying to get him a ward in position to look for a flank. Yep, That's where it's it going to be. He drops the ward. Inspired's getting very low, though. They have to they have to start this now. Yep, they got to be ready to go. There comes your paranoia. Vulcan going to stuck in the damage here with a start. Impact coming around. Slicing Maelstrom will rend Team Liquid as evil geniuses will lose two of their own. And Bjergsen responds with a double kill. A beautiful answer from one of the best to ever do it. And Team Liquid shows no fear. EG, it looks like they had that perfect engage, but Inspired was at like 10% from the Baron. He goes in, it's just a one-way trip. The exhaust comes down on Impact. Core did not panic and use it early on anyone else. Saved it for Impact there. As a result, Hans Cleanse Flash survives barely, and Danny cannot catch up once more to finish off these kills. It was a pretty well-timed engage. As we see, Vulcan's gonna go up. He's gonna drop the ward you know, right there in the pit for the TP flank. They don't necessarily have vision of it, but they have to know it's coming. But look over here, look at Inspired. His health is getting so incredibly low. So yeah. even though the timing is pretty good on this, the lights get turned out so they don't see him on the ward. He comes in for the wraparound. As Inspired goes forward, like look at his health. He's got 250 health. The exhaust is immediate onto the cannon flank. And they can't get the kill, but they do get one down on bot side onto Bwipo. But now it's TL pinging towards Baron, won't be able to start it. That's a triple kill for impact if Core JJ doesn't have that exhaust. Everybody on TL was so yeah. low. I mean, Hans barely survived. If you kill him, you get that reset. The extra resets the move speed for the Jinx. Closing in, get multiple kills. You can turn to Baron potentially. It's game changing how quick he was because that wasn't even like, it felt like he exhausted the first tick. It felt like it was instantaneous. Core JJ ready to go on the exhaust, can save the game sometimes. Eight to nine overall, still about a two and a half thousand gold lead for Team Liquid. But Evil Geniuses are not sitting back and letting Liquid uh -oh. run the show. Vulcan goes for the head no flash of the wall. They're going after Han Sama. He's down to a third, but they can't quite kill him. And now Team Liquid ready for the punch back. Bjergsen is godlike as Han Sama can rejoin the fray. Make it a double, make it a triple. You don't mess with the goat, it's Bjergsen, baby. Bjergsen wiping him off the map as TL set the trap and EG take the bait. They wanted to kill Hans there, knew his summoners were down, but he had the team behind him. They're gonna get Baron and they are gonna pull into an enormous lead here in game number three. The early game was looking real nice for EG, but ever since those three kills in the mid game, it's just been the TL show. Here was the play one more time. Yeah, it's all about the vision play. They never saw Jarvin, so EG say, all right, let's go. As they go in, though, they get eyes on Jarvin. Bjergsen is still in the area. There's an extra man there. The knockup from Santorin catching Danny and Jojo. Both the carries in the knockup, both the carries in the cataclysm. No flash on Jinx means no way out. Bjergsen flies forward, AoE hitting all of them. On <laughs> Sama, having a lot. He's like, ah, I got it's you. Like, you got me, you got, you got me you had me. 33% HP. Good job. Yep. Awesome. Look at the damage done in the tier. The top laners weren't there, so a couple of donuts in the top lane. Santorin nearly did as much damage as Bjergsen did. And he's a damn Jarvan. Yep. I mean, he, he did more than, than Jojo and Danny did, right? Like, he, he played that team fight perfectly. Getting the multi-man knockout on both the carries, getting them both in the Cataclysm, hitting everyone with every bit of his damage that he could. And now EG really on the back foot. They do still have go buttons, but the question is, can you win the fight when you find the engage? 
Impact is split pushing top, so I think the answer is just to look for a TP flank potentially. You know, they have a ward deep in bot lane. I can't tell if that's a trinket ward or actually uh, a ward that they could TP on. Um, but for now, he's just gonna trade tier two top, get a little bit more gold. And he's likely trying to work towards that death cap. And they are okay. going for the deep TP flank, so that ward was available, but it's a counter TP. Yup. They're all gonna turn for the cannon. The teleports are ready to go. Impact just slicing Maelstrom on to his opponent only. Bjergsen staying alive with the stasis. He's trying to deal with Impact, but now the rest of EG are trying to go in. Jojo's gonna be taken low as Bjergsen takes Impact into the picture. Jojo about to die next. Inspire's about to fall. Han Sam has been traded, but he's the only one. Team Liquid just won the game. Team Liquid crush through the perfect response there on the TP flank. Bjergsen with the Insta TP forces the ulti out on one. TL on the march to victory will push themselves to match point. Let's go Team Liquid responding powerfully here in game number three, 17 to nine, 27 and a half minutes in, they move to match point. It's been a really good series. Game two, game three, very competitive between these two teams. Team Liquid really showing their class though. This one was so much about mid jungle support for TL. The jungler roaming around with core, him and Santorin getting so much done and Bjergsen cleaning up in so many of these fights. 10, two and four on this Ari. And there were so many little things in this game that could have gone slightly different yep. and been so much better for EG and specifically for Danny. Recall back to bottom lane, the Leona engage that the stun gets interrupted by the hook from Core JJ. That stops a kill from maybe coming through. That super mega death rocket that went a little bit wide and barely missed Nocturne just singed the hairs off his Hans butt. Hans living with 20 that HP. That could have happened. Hans living with 20 HP. The team fight where it looked like it might have been able to work out, but the exhaust onto impact. That's four different moments right there. All just being slightly different could have been a very different outcome. And that's showing your class on the side of TL, right? Yeah. That they can execute in those moments. You know, that was not... Uh, just getting lucky, right? It's Core no. hitting the perfectly timed hook. It's Core finding the perfect exhaust on the cannon flank. You know, it's Bjergsen being able to capitalize on these perfect engages that we were finding time and time again from Santorin. TL showing their veteranship, showing their experience. Well, they're up two to one in this series now. They go blow for blow with EG to take the lead. And now we're going to head on over to the State Farm Analyst Desk to break the game down. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. Blow for blow is right. Two to one now for Team Liquid, but a very close series, as in this one, they had to mount the comeback of all things. Uh, but we're gonna start as we have been all series long in Champion Select, because that's okay. where we've put a major yeah. focus, yes. particularly around the junglers. And with Team Liquid electing to go back to red side, we get a different jungle match, a completely different jungle mm -hmm. matchup. Yeah, I actually really like the Nocta pick. I, I think the Nocta pick did a lot of work for them early game. Um, they got a lot of picks off of that, and I, I just think the comp just makes a lot of sense. You know, you have Nocturne going in, they're not going to see the cannon flank in, and cannon just gets a huge, huge uh, engage. Um, they've done that a few times this game, and, you know, they couldn't pull it off in the end, but I really like the concept of the comp. Yeah, and here we'll see a bunch of really cool Nocturne highlights. Uh, another thing you did see in EG's draft priority that I want to touch upon really quickly is on blue side, they made sure that Vulcan was on the Leona, to, so they have a tanky initiator. Um, uh, they also picked the Rise super early, which I think it prioritizing Jojo on something where he can affect side lanes and also be pretty tanky in team fights is really good. Yeah, and the one thing we didn't see off this one was hilarious. The level one. The level one. <laughs> the the level level one. one. What a great level one <laughs> yeah. that was, though. Yeah, just sitting there menacingly <laughs> waiting for the, the suspense. To come. The yeah. suspense. Yes, finally came through, and that's what got inspired ahead, that first blood that he was <laughs> able to get off that. Yeah. Um, and as you saw through the replay, like, just being able to solidify the advantage that he had. Yeah, just going off of the level one, really like how EG pushed their advantage, like seeing the yep. level three dive, I think that was really, really well played and just put EG in like a really, really good position early game where Bjerg lost two waves. He, um, you know, just died to Inspire and Jojo. And I, I felt like Jojo just did a lot early game. He was, I, I just see him keep pointing bot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important when we were talking about like, okay, what are win cons for EG as a team? Inspired getting involved with his lanes, better side lane control, which we did see, I thought, especially in game two. Um, and then, uh, you know, inspired on something again, where he's 
helping get everyone ahead and also having these set plays that JoJo can play into. So here's the thing though, right? We're pleased with the comp, conceptually. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good. We're happy with how yeah. the game yeah. started. Like EG Brilliant yeah, level right? one, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the way we've been talking EG. about them, it's like it's a 2-1 EG scoreline. So Raz, yeah. what went wrong? How did it end up falling apart for them? <laughs> I didn't go wrong. They won the game, right? <laughs> no, no, All right, fine. Rico, what went wrong? Yeah, yeah, I, I think the biggest problem for EG just throughout the series was side laning. Mm. Uh, we, we saw that Jojo Peon just caught, caught twice uh, in the ball lane, I believe, um, and just gave a lot of just early game tempo and lead and just allowed Beard to just pop off, always have agency. Um, and, and I feel like this happens a lot. I, it happens um, a decent amount in like game two, I believe, and uh, game three, he died twice this game, so. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that needs to be fixed, uh, and it's losing them games. Something that Raz brought up initially when we were talking about EG and scrims to stage and how aggressive people think they are versus how aggressive they are in game and trying to go for some of these plays. In that team fight previously, you saw, like, they want to go for a fight, but they're not necessarily set up for it, or they don't have enough vision to know what the man advantage is, and so people end up going in one by one and dying, and it doesn't work out. Yeah, so this one just turned into a bit of a stat check. Thinking that they could get the Ash and be able to back away there. <laughs> so at this point, TL is going to be able to solidify the win off this one. I like the creativity by the end. I mean, they tried. They had the ward when they, I, I think it was like the game ending fight in the bottom yeah, side of the Yeah, trying to TP, mm -hmm. but we had the exactly. double TP from each top lane. Exactly. So Bjergsen handled it perfectly um, to be able to stuff that one, just be able to match it when the wave was literally just on the top of the ward. But mm -hmm. yes, they had a lead, Evil Geniuses. Uh, that one fight where they ended up taking it knowing how Nocturne was strong anyways and that he could mm -hmm. always join the fight, but Ash wasn't going to, or at least uh, Danny wasn't going to be involved. He was actually coming in from a flank, but he was gonna, if he was going to join the fight, he was going to be really late. So then just picking and choosing which fight is best for you um, and which fight isn't is going to be what's important for Evil Geniuses. They've kind of stumbled throughout the split when it came to that. And Team Liquid is a type of team that actually won games this split based off of... Uh, taking chances off of a teams. Like, there was one game where they should have lost to IMT. IMT made that one big failure, mm -hmm. and then they just instantly got back into the game. Um, so they're hunters. <laughs> they look for those type of picks and then get right back into the game. A mark of a good team, right, who could find their opening rather in a losing a situation yeah. and, and ultimately yeah. come back. So TL Mount to come back this time around. Speak, I'm going to ask you the tough question, but as a player yourself, right. if you step off that stage in EG's shoes, where, again, you feel like you played a lot of the game right mm -hmm. and you maybe felt like you had a solid composition, yeah. how much are you actually talking about changing? And, again, they have side selections, so... Where, you know, back to red. Is red going to continue to be favored? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's not really a draft issue. I feel like it's just execution and communication issue. So I, I don't think EG needs to change too much. Run um, back. You know, what I like to see is just to back. just involve impact more. Because okay. I, I, I feel like he's had a vantage position in, like, all three games. Um, you know, game one, he's playing the NAR. He's winning. Game two, Grace, he did super, super well. In this game, he had a lot of agency as well. Um, but they were mm -hmm. not really fighting with him. I, yeah. I feel like the cannon... Yeah. Nocturne combo should be something that's super destructive, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see the cannon, you knock down OT, you just wipe everyone. Um, I would just like to see them play around his timings more, you know, helping up, you know, just helping him move around the map. And I feel like uh, that would just help him a lot. And the most important thing, going back to what Speaker said earlier about just like dying on sides. Yep. There was that one play that we already saw, Rises on side lane. Um, and he sees Santorin clearing out his vision, like mm -hmm. in his jungle, uh, basically on red side. So, like, you have the vision, you know that they have uh, first push mid, just playing respectfully in those moments, right? You don't have to put yourself in a bad position and then try to outplay. I think that's something that they rely a lot in some of their earlier games, but especially in this series, it is an issue of just playing better. Well, game number four, EG with sides like they will hop back over to red. It is the 100% win rate side in this series uh, at the very least, so they're going to index... Five? Hey, follow the stats, you know? There it is. That's why I say 100%. It's guaranteed. Uh, but, uh, but I do wonder, because I think, I think most of us are in agreement here, where I don't want to see a ton change. Even if you're flipping sides, yeah. I do want to see kind of a similar-looking draft out of EG, just played a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this comes down to execution. One thing I am glad for uh, is that outside of Game 1, I feel like EG have drafted themselves a lot more opportunities mm -hmm. and a lot more ease of execution. So that's something that's really good and I want to see continue. Uh, and then it just comes down to 
that actual execution in game. <laughs> yeah, Raz, I'm also happy. I know the series isn't over yet, but I'm also happy that three games in, we are actually getting, I think, an EG that's living up to yeah. the, the yeah. hype that was around them. The hype, you know, that we weren't necessarily yeah. creating, that, but that players themselves and talking about them. I'm like, oh, this is that threat. Yes that they're mm -hmm. talking about when they say the one and four seeds are maybe closer than people thought. They saw something we didn't, of course. I mean, just, I'm yeah. thinking they're 3-0. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking back my words. They're going to play really, really well, actually. And I mean, I feel like TL just needs to play better early game. Like, game two and game Ooh. three, they're just playing super poor. Um, they're just not respecting timings, and, you know, EG's making a lot of good plays as well. So um, I, I feel like if, you know, EG plays their early game well, just... Face on making mistakes, they can definitely take TL. So opposite problems, right? Yeah, yeah. For, for Team Liquid, man, they're comfortable once we get past 20 minutes, even in a deficit. And then for the side of EG, they're like, yeah, we can build a lead, no problem. But then what do we do with all this money? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Throw ourselves up. <laughs> Buy NFTs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's the ticket. No, so, but it's so, it's so funny because, yes, this coming into this series, for sure, for sure, I thought that this was going to be a lot more of a... Uh, you know, one-sided affair. I walked in the weekend yeah. so confident 3-0 yeah. today. That's what I thought. Exactly. I think we, we all were in the we same We all place. did. Not, not Emily. Emily's uh, smarter. Uh, this game. Emily is smarter it, than us. Let's say you uh, update your prediction. What would it be? Oh, my God. 3-2. 3-2? Yeah, TL. already rolled so three, two, TL. TL. Still. Still TL. Yeah. Still okay. TL. I will say this. Even as someone that made the 3-1 prediction, EG are playing a lot better mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. I thought. Because better I than thought, your 3-1. Yeah, so I thought that one game, the way that 3-1 series can go is they can either be like super, super close, almost like a 3-2 in your yeah. mind, or they can be like a three of these games mm -hmm. were not close, and then we made like an incredible draft error in mm -hmm. the one game we lost, which gotcha. is actually what I thought this series was going oh. to be. So these teams have been a lot more evenly matched mm -hmm. than I thought. And you can see EG improving and at least trying to go through the thought process of you know side lane control and side lane pressure mm -hmm. even though they have still made a lot of mistakes there there are very few sounds that are sweeter than silver scraping so i'm hoping Ugh. we get to that fifth and final I game disagree. Uh, i disagree i want five games <laughs> and I disagree with that statement all right all right well as long as we get to five games we'll both be happy we'll see whether or not evil geniuses will rise to the occasion or fall to the lower bracket in game number four right after this be here here. comes Bjergsen. Okay. Oh no. Where are you gonna go? Oh no, Ari, don't walk into oh that. Oh my god! Ari, no! Team Liquid's found one, and it ain't gonna just be that. Two for nothing there in the trade. Han Sama's at nothing, but he's still doing better than Danny. They're going after Han Sama. He's down to a third, but they can't quite kill him. And now Team Liquid ready for the punch back. Bjergsen is godlike as Han Sama can rejoin the fray. Make it a double, make it a triple. You don't mess with the goat, it's Bjergsen, baby.